can't get over how long she's getting. I just took her off my boob and like placed her down as carefully as possible, but I'm so bad at putting her down for naps. But that's how she likes sleeping. Her her hand is up against her face, so she's not like smushed into the uh, mattress, if you get me. I got my HelloFresh delivery, so I'm gonna open it now. I'm so happy that they've started delivering in Ireland because I actually ordered this as a present for Jason's sister when she first had her baby, and this is something I would have loved to have as well. I'm finding it really hard to function without any sleep, so hopefully <laughs> she, she starts sleeping a bit more over the next few days so I can concentrate. <laughs> when you get your baby, you're on such a high obviously so you you don't really care about anything else there just isn't any support system in place for new mothers especially post-birth brioche buns dinner is sorted spend less time grocery shopping and just enjoy the fun part now there's nothing that triggers me more than when jason comes home from work and he's like what will we eat there's no food in the house i don't want to be taking on all the household jobs thinking of dinners to make are you just stop I don't want to be doing it ever again. Lentil shepherd's pie. Oh my God, so good. With butternut squash topping. I've been talking about it on my TikTok. I've been trying to get more veggies in, so this is a good option. Okay, cheesy chipotle bean quesadillas. Now I'm not having dairy, so I'm just not gonna have the cheese part, but that's fine. Smoky spice veggie burgers with cheese and sweet potato veggies. Again, I'm not just gonna, I'm just gonna, not gonna have, <laughs> I'm just not gonna have the cheese. Oh my God, I'm so excited for these. So I'll probably cook one for my lunch today and maybe for a dinner tonight. Oh no! And it comes in a little ice with a little ice pack. So everything's all fresh. During my six weeks of healing from my episiotomy, I would be buying Tesco or delivery orders, like food orders, but then like Jason would I, I wouldn't communicate what meals I wanted from to Jason, or like he wouldn't know how to cook them and I was bed bound. Uh, we ended up throwing out so much food and as well post-birth with your breastfeeding, you're way hungrier breastfeeding than you are pregnant. Like when I was pregnant, I would get full up so fast because my stomach was much smaller because she was obviously pushing against it and I'd have heartburn. So I just wasn't hungry all the time. But now that I'm breastfeeding, it's like I have this insatiable need. It's almost as if I'm gonna slaughter the cow myself and like eat it raw. Almost, I have dreams about like eating raw meat all the time because I'm just so, so, so hungry. <laughs> Look at her. Look at the way she's lying. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Can it such a nice day? I know, I think we go for a walk in Phoenix Park. I'm like ready yeah, to go I'd now. Love to. Okay, wait. What well, can I eat first because I have my breakfast? You wanna eat? Okay. godsend to have the HelloFresh meal sent straight to my door with such great quality ingredients that come from local Irish suppliers. Hello! And everything is pre-measured so nothing ends up in the bin and you don't have to pay for more than you need. You can also select your weekly recipes, modify the servings per recipe and schedule delivery at your convenience. And you can pause and cancel your subscription at any um, time. With 12 recipes to choose from each week, your dinners will be always be different. And you can get introduced to new exciting taste experiences or stick to your tried and tested classics. But whatever you choose, the meals are delivered with simple steps by separate recipes and fresh ingredients. Use my code HelloKeelan for up to 75 euro off of your first three boxes. Stay fresh. Click the link in my description. Through the years, I've gradually grown unsusceptible in the face of adversity, which can sometimes leave me feeling cold or numb. Even in circumstances when I should feel joy, jubilance or excitement. I would squeeze my eyelids shut and open them wide to try to refocus them. Walk at night time to listen to the wind or rub my feet on the grass in desperate attempts to feel anything other than nothing. Becoming a mother and responding to my daughter's needs, paying scrupulous attention to every grunt, cry and wail. Learning how to decipher in which way to hold, rock or soothe her. Sometimes not knowing, feeling the panic, shame and guilt but then hearing her squeal or laugh and feeling exuberant. Motherhood has ripped open the depths of me to uncover a petulant child that wants to viscerally scream when I don't get what I want. Hello. Cry louder and louder until someone hears and kick the ground in a tantrum. It's been a shock to the system to feel so much and to not know how to control it or repress it like I used to. Motherhood has brought me back to when I was just a baby whose needs were met by someone else when I would cry until my throat was sore and open the door in case they couldn't hear me. My earliest memory is of me and my mom in the supermarket on a Saturday doing a food shop. I was probably around four and at that size, everything is so big and daunting. The shop being the equivalent of a new city to me now. 
I got distracted by something for a second. Probably crisps. Skips to be specific because they were my favourite. I turned back around and couldn't find my mum. I tried walking along dairy fridges so I could see down every aisle but still couldn't find her. Panic rose and too young to feel shame yet I started crying and screaming, Mummy! Until a shop assistant found me and brought me to the cashier desk. I remember not knowing my mother's name then, void of any identity other than being an extension of me. When the shop assistant started calling for Keelan's mum to the cashier desk, I thought she wouldn't come, or worse, she'd have left without me. But after a minute or two, she showed up. Although it was a relief to find her, I knew by the look on her face that she hadn't been looking for me at all. Because she was teething and like, she wasn't feeding as much as she usually does. It's kind of fucked up with my supply a little bit. I've decided it's bulking season. My hydro flask started to smell a little bit. And I know there can be a buildup of mildew or mold in your, if you have any like flask water bottles. Cause all my chilies bottles just started to smell so bad and I never knew how to clean them properly. And I didn't think to fucking Google it. So I Googled how to clean a hydro flask and you're supposed to put baking soda and hot water in for one night, leave it to soak for 24 hours, pour it out, wash it out and then put in white vinegar, distilled white vinegar and hot water for another 24 hours and it should get rid of the smell and any sort of like bacteria, that uh, bacteria buildup that's in there. Cause I tried cleaning it out with just soap and water and it still has a weird smell so. I'm not gonna risk it and start drinking out of it. Also, this apartment does get very damp. So I got a dehumidifier. It's okay. It doesn't really work that much, but I have been putting the dehumidifier beside the laundry because my laundry started to smell damp then as well. Like this jumper, it literally took, it took about three days to dry. We do have a 200 euro credit with board gosh for our heating and electricity this month, which is really good. Like our apartment's too small, so I don't really put the heating on that often, but I did just get an electric hot water bottle and it's like the best thing. It has a little thing so you can, like this, put your hands in. She all of a sudden has started like screaming in the bath and she re like she's initially she likes it but then she starts screaming like after about two minutes and she screams the whole way after getting her dry and putting her clothes on when usually she likes it. I'm not sure why, it might just be a phase though with babies you find that like they go through one thing and it lasts a bit only a few days and then they get over it. <laughs> Our evening routine then. Now I'm no more of a, as a parenting style, I'm more of a facilitator rather than a regulator, which means I let her lead the way and then I just surrender to her needs depending on what she wants. So it's using a lot of your intuition and like the opposite of going by your routine. So I'm not like timing when her feeds are and timing when her naps are. I don't get too stressed out if she doesn't take a long enough nap because I'm just like, her body isn't telling me that she wants a long nap, you know? Uh, demand led breastfeeding as well. So once I like let go of the idea that I need to go by a strict routine and she needs to do this by this hour or like she's, it's gonna fuck up her whole day. I just let that go because I just, it feels really unnatural to me and I don't know why. I'm sure there's some scientific reasoning behind it or there's some like conspiracy. It's probably like a capitalist reasoning as to why they created this whole like routine for babies thing, even though every baby is different. She basically during the day, and I'd say it's my, it's my own fault. She probably gets it from me. When I was pregnant, I was so active. She needs to be like doing something all the time. Like she doesn't like being stationary or stagnant or just like being inside all the time. She needs a bit of action. I do try to get out with her as much as possible, but like I said before, I can only really leave the house if someone else is here because I can't carry down the boogie myself. Oh my God. So much of my hair is falling out. Like my pillow is covered in hair when I wake up. But I'm trying not to think about it too much because like it's it happens. It, it just happens. Like it's normal and it will grow back. It's only hair. I'm facilitating her and going by her needs. So I'm really, you really have to be so observant and so present, which is kind of healing and helpful for me because it forces me to be really a really hands-on parent all the like the milestones that we have to hit is that she's gaining weight and that she's getting enough sleep which she is i would love yeah one night off obviously but i'm not like too pushed you know i'm not like oh i need it you know i'm gonna go insane i'm just kind of like i know it would be good for me that's kind of the only i know that my dad and stepmom would like like to have her for a night because they were offered, like, as soon as she was born, they were offering. I know that people want to help and want to be able to feed her. But I'm not too pushed. At the, at the moment, I'm the breadwinner and I'm the primary caregiver. The disparity of the domestic labour is not equal at the moment. We divide our bills by equity. Everything is divided by equity in the household. So groceries, bills are mostly paid for by me. For the benefit of our relationship and also my mental well-being. And in terms of making financial sense, he's going to take an extended parental leave which basically means like he can take a period of time off and still have his job back at the end of it like it's not like he's quitting i want to finish my financial accounting course i st like got halfway through 
And then at my third trimester, I was exhausted. By the way, I could not sleep at, like my sleep was way, way worse in my third trimester than it is now. If anyone's worried about the whole sleep thing, I'm probably like scaring you about the lack of sleep. My sleep was so much worse in the third trimester because I, my body was so uncomfortable and I was actually in agony at certain points of it. Anyways, he's taking an extended parental leave starting at the end of December so I can finish my financial accounting course because I want to have like a backup. I don't like having just all my eggs in one basket especially having a child. I want to be financially secure and have like another role I can go into if it needs be. Obviously I could be like a social media strategist or something, but I don't know. I just like having something else under my belt. I started working on a book as well last year and I never got to finish it. I'd like to be able to finish that now. So he's gonna take six months off so I can do all of that while also continuing to breastfeed her, but it won't be as much because she will be on solids as well. But anyway, that's my plan. If anyone was wondering about the whole job situation or like what I was gonna do for the future, a lucky enough position to be able to save for the last while. Not as much as I planned to. My goal was to save two grand a month. Obviously I made a video about it, like financial budgeting, but I like was not budgeting at all. It was so hard for me to, because I just had a baby. I was like, fuck, I'm not punishing myself anymore. Like I can just spend, if I have the money, I'm gonna spend it and enjoy myself because like my body was taking ages to recover. My mental health is really bad, so. But now when Jason's on, parental leave will be much easier to save because like we'll be able to do free things together and it's much easier to plan activities if you have someone else with you with a baby. We're both also going to learn how to drive in those six months so we can like tag team the baby it'll be much easier to get things done. I have always wanted like if I was going to have kids I was undecided whether I wanted to have kids or not and then like mother nature kind of made the decision for me. Yeah and then what happened? Where? But if I was going to have kids, I'd want a few because I love my si my siblings are my best friends, and I wouldn't want I, I would want to give that to my child as well. But after the, the whole postpartum experience, I just feel a bit too traumatized, and I know that's just for the moment. My mind might change in a few years, but it wasn't actually the giving birth part that was the hard bit. I can endure pain, that's no problem. But it was like the lack of support afterwards. Like no one cares about the mother. And that's not to say that my friends and family didn't care, obviously they care so much, but it's just like the system does not care about the mother at all. The world isn't a child friendly place and subsequently it's not a women friendly place. The world is literally built to hate women and because women the majority of the time are the primary caregivers, there's no support for child friendly things that are going on. People are pissed off when a buggy's on a path, whereas like we've earned the right as much as anyone else to have space on the path. But I am loving Dublin at the moment. It's not me giving out about Dublin. There are of course really nice people that help you like lift down the buggy when you're getting off the dart and help lift it up. But other than that, it hasn't been like a hugely nice experience. Like, I kind of, um, I am a little bit disappointed. I expected to be a bit better, but I don't know why, because even when I was pregnant, nine months pregnant, no one, be st no one would be rushing to st give me their seat on any pu sort of, uh, form of public transport, ever. I was just able to have a shower and take a shit and brush my teeth all while she was taking a nap. Hello, big stretch. I bought this CC cream. I saw this on a TikTok ad and I actually got hashtag influenced about that. Cut out. This is the first time I've ever gotten hashtag influenced. 
the breastfeeding shopping is it gets out of hand because when you're scrolling on your phone you're just like bored and you want to make yourself feel better and the quickest way to do that is through shopping it's getting to the stage where it's a problem now but i bought this off juliana shield had this on a tiktok ad she showed like the difference between one side of her face and the other i have such an issue i am very sallow skinned during the summertime i tan very easily and i go very very tan but then when it gets the winter months i don't i don't like wearing, wearing fake tan so none of my makeup like suits my face and i find that everything looks orange on me even the widest shades like the lightest lightest shades because i'll go very pale in the winter and i just look sickly so i need to have something on my skin so i just don't look poorly so i thought Let's try CC cream. I have a lot of redness. I want to cover my under eyes. Obviously I have bags now because I'm not really sleeping that often. This is just the easiest, quickest way. And you can also apply it with your hands, which I find that's like a must have for me. If I don't have to wet a, a beauty sponge. Oh no, can I just rub this on my face and then come back? I put Miss Rachel on for five, 10 minutes in the morning so that I can make my breakfast and she does stay distracted for that long. But then she kind of gets sick of it and she starts crying. As soon as Wheels on the Bus comes on, that's she's re she's reached her limit and she's over it. And I don't want to be like getting her used to screen time, if you know what I mean. There's nothing wrong with screen time. But it's like, if I have the time to do these things myself, I want to be able to do it. Like the baby sign, teaching her love and words. And there are flashcards you can get in Hodges Figures. There's a really good children's section. The last time I was there, I was pregnant. So now that I'm actually, I have her here, I might as well fucking get go get them. So now you can see my skin. It is very pale looking, but I do put cream blush on. I just put on brow gel. Sorry, I have to be looking in the... Just making it really easy, as easy as possible for myself. Because it does help if you have ADHD as well. If you get ready for the morning, that it's like, that's the signifier that your day has started. Otherwise you just will laze around in bed all day calling yourself a piece of shit. So I have to do something. Sorry, that brow gel as well is like the Beauty Bay brow gel. And this blush I just use as a lip balm and it's the Dr. Paw Paw. I'll use it for my lips as well. So it's all like, I'm really feeling like I want to bleach my hair. I'm going through an identity crisis right now. And I'm looking at old pictures of myself, which is almost like the worst thing you can do. Like not comparing yourself to other people, but comparing yourself to your past self. Like especially if you were a fucking teenager or something, like obviously you're not going to look like that. If you look back on all those pictures of your past self you even felt shit about yourself then so even in a five years time and i'm looking at pictures of me now i might be like oh why did i waste all that time like feeling sorry for myself or like not lo liking my reflection in the mirror it's such a fucking waste of time in the morning jason will take her into the sitting room to like because i can't sleep if she's in the same room as me because if she even sniffs i'm like you know or moves her leg i'm like Jason takes her out in the morning so I can get a bit of sleep but if he's on an early morning shift I, he can't do that so then he was in at 8 this morning so I didn't get any sleep at all last night or this morning. <laughs> <laughs> 